Hello, my name is Ian Tyndale. Welcome to our robot future. This episode, what have the robots ever done for us? Now, when I refer to robots, it's likely that you're imagining a thing that you have derived from a film that you once saw, or a television series, or a graphic novel cartoon. The fictional world of film and television has many examples of robots, and indeed, this represents most people's exposure to the idea of a robot. What is a robot? Well, the name derives from a 1920 Czech play, Rossum's Universal Robots, or RUR, by Karel Čapek. His play introduced the term robot to mean labourer or worker, and in the context of the play, an artificial humanoid worker. When I refer to robots, I'm not necessarily thinking of a humanoid or android that we have manufactured, although this is the most popular image found in fiction. I particularly define a robot as a system with ability to form processes for sensing and actuation toward a goal within high uncertainty and high ambiguity environments. Does this describe a washing machine or a computer printer? Well, not really. Both machines perform a fixed catalogue of actions, limited in variability, in their predictable known environment. If a washing machine has no water or a printer paper is, uh, the printer paper supply is absent, only a predetermined response can be acted out. If a red sock is in the whitewash or the paper is in upside down, nothing is done to rectify it. The IoT, the Internet of Things descendants of Siri, Cortana and the like, will also fall into my definition of robots. They will be connected to the world's real and synthesised knowledge. Instead of simply displaying or speaking the result of an action that you initiated, they could perform real-world actions on their own initiative for our benefit. Supermarket self-service checkouts themselves are not robots. If they are, they're the most useless ones imaginable. But in effect, the entire self-serve checkout area does become one, it becomes a big staff-assisted robot for humans to affect their purchases by bringing their goods into. Robots use sensors and actuators to work toward complex goals within ambiguous and uncertain environments. It doesn't have to look like a human. But fiction frequently portrays robots as very human-like, and indeed one of the storylines sometimes used is that they're not easy to distinguish from humans. However, if we put design effort into creating robots that closely resemble a human, they'd still fall into uncanny valley. Why do we have such good colour vision? Well, one theory is, as we lost thick body hair of apes, detecting subtle changes of skin tone gave us more accurate clues to other people's emotional states. I personally doubt we'll see a lot of robots with a human body plan of two arms, two legs and a head on top. We may see some, but I suspect the majority will not be, although the human shape is unspecialised, which is ideal for a robot. We are like we are because of our primate ape ancestors and not necessarily because a biped is the ideal generalist body plan to give to a robot. I could be incorrect though, and the future may turn out to be full of humanoid androids, just like in the films and on television. I doubt it though. The often assumed greater physical strength is another misleading aspect. To exhibit super strength, where would such reserve energy be stored? There isn't that much spare room on a humanoid frame. We're still in the days of inefficient, weak, buzzing electric motors and actuators powered by easily exhaustible heavy batteries. So hurry up and make cheaper, better fuel cells. Oh, and while you're at it, develop and improve a viable synthetic muscle. 
Otherwise, robots will remain expensive, clumsy toys. This has been our robot future. This episode was, what have the robots ever done for us? My name is Ian Tyndale. I hope you're enjoying this. Goodbye.